the chairs at the front, uh, we've been talking in our Lenten Wednesdays about how and where Jesus shows up in our daily life through our daily callings as we are called to be, uh, from our baptism, to be the hands and feet of Christ. And wherever we are and whatever we're doing, we are to be those signs of God's love. As we heard in that gospel uh, text from John, to love as we have first been loved. So tonight, as we uh, look at the season of retirement, uh, we have four speakers, uh, Dennis, Bonnie, Doug, and Lori, and they'll be each sharing about how they are living out their faith in this season of retirement. I'm Dennis Hirschbach, and uh, my retirement started off pretty rocky. I, uh, let's see, it was less than 50 days, bef working days before my last day. Uh, I ended up having emergency open heart surgery, double bypass. Uh, two weeks later, my mother died. Exactly three years after that, my dad died. Two years after that, my wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer, and exactly one year after that, she died. So that was kind of a rough start. Um, but during that time, I learned some very valuable lessons. Uh, one of them, I learned the value of friends. Because after my wife died, my camping buddy kept calling me and asking me how I was doing, and we would sit and talk and talk and talk and talk. And while I, and, and I had lived my whole adult life in Two Harbors, Minnesota. And while I was there, I was part owner of a small logging company, uh, among other things. That's not what I retired from. But uh, my logging partner, who was also my very, very best friend, called me up one day and said, uh, how, how are you doing? And uh, I said, well, not very well. And he said, I'm picking you up tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock and be ready to take a walk in the woods. And he took me up north of Two Harbors, and we spent the entire day walking through the areas that we had logged and talking about the old times the value of friendship. Uh, another thing I learned was the value of having a purpose in life because, uh, as you can imagine, my life was pretty well upset. And uh, the bishop, the bishop secretary actually, of Northeast Minnesota said that they were organizing a mission trip to Honduras and she thought it would be good for me to go and I wanted to go up there and build bricks, and they sent me up there to teach theology to the budding Honduran church, Lutheran church. Uh, it was so successful, we went back two more times, and so in a period of 18 months, I went to Honduras uh, three times, which was really, really wonderful, uh, wonderful people. I had a purpose. Well, another thing, and for anyone contemplating retiring, you better find a passion in life. And you don't know what that is, but uh, it'll pop up. My passion happened to be something I never dreamed I would find, and that was my passion became writing. And in a period of 11 years, I wrote eight books, one on the grieving process, uh, became a poet, and got a few awards nationally and statewide. And uh, as of two weeks ago, I retired from writing. I just decided <laughs> I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> well, I learned also the value of love and companionship. I had five years that were really, really barren. And then a friend of mine from St. Cloud wrote me one Christmas in a Christmas card saying, I have a friend you might like to meet. And uh, she said not to mention her name, so I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
this is how I ended up down here nine years ago and became a member of this congregation. Uh, we did get married, by the way. Uh, well, anyway, the, the, one of the most valuable things I learned was the, the value of community. And I found that community really, really active in two harbors after my wife died. Uh, found it in the church, Bethlehem Lutheran Church. And I came down here and I found community here. I found community in the city of Sartell, in the friends that I've made, but I found community here in this church. And uh, you can wrap all that together, uh, I guess passion, uh, purpose, a whole lot of things that are right here. So I'll conclude by saying that um, before I retired, in fact, when I was about 50, I started keeping track of how many days I had before retirement. <laughs> and <laughs> I hate to say it, but I had a calendar. <laughs> I kept crossing the days off. But a friend of mine said, well, he wasn't really a friend of mine, but we'll say he was a friend of mine. Uh, anyway, he said, what is wrong with you? You're going to be an old man when you retire. And I want to say that my retirement has been wonderful. And especially the last nine years, um, I'm so lucky. And I have to say that uh, the last nine years have been the best nine years of my life. Thank you. Thank you, hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm Bonnie Autumn, a member here for many years. Um, I need to give you a little background into my retirement plan. I grew up in a very small town of 200 and uh, 2,500, excuse me, 2,500 people. And 500 of those people were the prisoners at the reformatory, so very small town. So I think my faith journey began when I was about 14 years old and the Augustana Lutheran Church came to town and established. I had a couple friends that were very active with their families in the church and they talked a lot about Luther League and what fun they were having, all the things they were learning. Even confirmation was great, you know. So I thought, yep, that's for me, I will join. So I did join. My family did not at that time. So things progressed. And after sc high school, I started my nursing education at Gustavus Adolphus College. <coughs> Somebody there recognized that. <laughs> um, so that enabled me to um, proceed to 37 years of nursing, hospital-based. But retirement came unexpected, very unexpected at age 59. Due to a reorganization at the facility I was working at, I was offered retirement. I thought, what am I gonna do at 59? That's too early to retire. You know, I had no plans to retire. One of the first days of my retirement after I'd made that coffee at six o'clock in the morning, which was my habit, my husband shuffled out to the, to the kitchen, and he said, well, you're retired now, aren't you? What's for lunch? <laughs> you know what I answered? I said, anything you want to make, dear. <laughs> so we got things straightened out right away, <laughs> right away. So my retirement led me, my background, my passions, I guess my interest led me into parish nursing. I knew some people that were doing that in their congregations. So I took the course and became the first and currently the only parish nurse at Celebration Church. But that my, combined with my background and, and the training that I had received in the parish nurse classes, um, I was able to empower members to do some caring and serving within our community. And that's what I wish for all of us, that we would be 
caring and serving and doing God's work. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Doug Allen. A lot of you know me. A lot of you know that I retired quite early. I uh, left my business at age 44. <clears throat> Wasn't ready to retire, so I did some consulting work. I consulted with our factory. I went to different distributorships around the United States. And that was kind of a nice transition. But that kind of ended. Not by me, not by them. It just kind of ended. So I sat and I sat on the couch. <laughs> and the reason I got involved in volunteering is people kept saying, what do you do all day? <laughs> eh, nothing. <laughs> I run the errands. I do different things. But I did nothing. And my daughter, Carrie, and my wife, Lori, you know, maybe I got nagged a little. <laughs> but I got pushed into doing something. So I looked into areas to volunteer. And I called different organizations. Do you need any volunteers? Nah, nah, nah. I called Country Manor Nursing Home. They didn't get back to me. I called them again. The reason I called them is my dad had just passed away in a nursing home. And he didn't have anybody visit him. He was in Austin, Minnesota. I would go down there once a week and play cards with him. And finally, I called back one more time and said, I can play cards. And they got back to me. <laughs> so then I met two of my best friends in life. Leona, age 92. <laughs> Betty, age 96. And Butch, who Greg knows. <laughs> and I play cards with them. Tuesdays and Thursdays, hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. And we had the best time. And I've had people ask me, what well, do you let them win? I said, are you kidding me? They're sharper than me. <laughs> no, I don't let them win. We play to the blood. <laughs> and then on Friday, I call bingo. And I have such a good time calling bingo. I don't just call... G50. I call G Hawaii 50 <laughs> or car 54, where are you? And I have learned one thing, and I think this is really an important thing. If anybody ever plans to do anything with the elderly, please don't patronize them. Don't treat them like they're little kids. I treat them like they're a peer. And they are up here. It, it, we've had such a good time. And I've made great friends. And it's, you know, I started out selfishly wanting to do something for myself. And then I found out I was doing good. But then it ended up selfishly. I'm enjoying myself. Thank you. Had to clean up in my church here. I'm Lori Allen. <laughs> um, I'm Lori Allen, and um, I've been a charter member of this wonderful church of ours. Um, many of you know, and I see some of my ex students in the congregation tonight that I taught in this great school district of ours for 26 years. Um, so four years ago, um, a little before this time, um, I was wondering and praying, God, what do I do now that I'm contemplating retirement? And I love teaching, Doug can attest to this, um, 
every day was a joy. And coming to church, seeing students here, you know, they don't really realize that you don't live at school. And so seeing them at church, seeing them in the grocery store, it's pretty special. So anyways, my question, God, what do I do now? I need to use my hands, use my faith, use my expertise. And um, in the mail one day, I got an invitation from Quiet Oaks Hospice House um, inviting Doug and I to a fundraiser. But attached at the bottom was um, a form to fill out if you want to volunteer. And I thought, I, I knew that that was one thing I wanted to do in my retirement. So um, thank you, God. That was a real nice answer to my prayer. I filled it out. I went through the training, um, retired the end of May and in June. I started volunteering at Quiet Oaks. Those of you that don't aren't familiar with Quiet Oaks, it's a nonprofit hospice house in St. Augusta, there's eight um, resident uh, rooms, but it's a home, and it's very intimate, it's Christ-filled, it's fun. You know, people think of dying as not fun, but when you have the right attitude, it's just going to, going on. But um, I cook there twice a week, and um, it's very fun, it's rewarding in the spring I plant gardens and herb gardens and then in the fall reap the tomatoes and peppers and use it in whatever but it's a wonderful wonderful place I sincerely urge anyone there's 240 volunteers it's there is a staff but it's pretty much run um, cooking three meals a day to residents their family friends and staff uh, in the palliative care unit and then the cooking, cleaning, it's pretty much run by volunteers. Um, but it's really rewarding. I also uh, fill my time uh, in the fall f with um, Salvation Army, um, distributing backpacks. Um, when it gets a little bit colder, distributing coats and at Christmas time, um, the needy come in and, you know, you dole out the Christmas presents. But it has really opened my eyes that in our back door, there are people that are living in their trucks and their briefcase is a tin bucket. It's just, you know, overwhelming. Um, another fun thing I get to do is uh, plant flowers around the Mac Baseball Stadium, the Veterans Gardens, all the, if anyone ever goes there, all those flowers that are there. Um, in the springtime, I get to go out there and organize people and get those plantings done so it looks really great all summer long. Um, there's just so many different things to do out there when you retire. The public library has lunch on June, July, August for kids. It's not income-based. You just um, fill out the application and you get to go there and give out food for kids. Um, doesn't cost anything. It's just, a, it's really fun to do. But my best thing to do, and Pastor Elizabeth <laughs> turned me on to this last Sunday when I was talking to her, as three little grandkids were <laughs> running around here, uh, that volunteering is doing for your grandkids also. And three daughters, families, it's the uh, joy of our joys to take care of grandkids when parents go on vacation, when they just need to be, you know, helped out. So uh, volunteering, retiring, it's wonderful to serve God. And I think um, Matthew 7, verse 7, one of my favorite um, Bible verses says, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. And it does. So, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, for all of our four, we are so grateful. Thank you so much. Let us, another round of applause. Yes. 
<laughs> and I was listening with very careful ears. So <laughs> I love Doug saying he just sat there and did nothing for a long time. And, was good at it. and very good at it. Let's stand and sing in response to the word. <laughs> open and my eyes are open. There is a hunger inside me. I want to do right, walk in the holy light, to live my days abundantly all of my life. I want to lose myself and be faithful all of my life. I want to be Please be seated. We'll continue with the offering. Now, isn't it so fun to hear how God's purpose is through all the time, times of our life for our retired people tonight, all the way back to last week when we heard the same thing from our youth uh, and our students. What a great, great thing. And we also are invited by God to participate in what God is doing through our giving and our generosity. So we're going to continue with our offering and also invite the children forward to the Joyful Jar. All the Joyful Jar will go for FAC, Feeding Area Children Together, Everything in the offering plate, unless otherwise designated, will go for our general fund here at Celebration. Let's worship God through our offering. And children, come forward to the joyful jar. If you'd like to give a child something for you, they can put it in. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. 